Rewatching the footage from yesterday's video, something struck me as very odd. These two ships that nearly collided in San Diego, if one ship was leaving port and one was entering port, you would think they would have just staggered the times by a few minutes to avoid the ships getting anywhere near each other. Well, some basic research has outed some brand new information, and it proves something. The Navy's lying. Not only about this, but I have now clear, documented proof from official documents showing that way back in 2017, even in the official reports, the United States Navy was lying to the American people and everybody who was interested. Now, this would not be a big deal if lives hadn't been lost. In this particular case, with the USS Momsen, the destroyer in front, and the USS Harper's Ferry, the docking landing ship, coming at you, no harm was done. But it proves something. And in today's video, we're going to illuminate this. And even the most hardened skeptics are going to have a very difficult time shooting down the information that I have to share with you today. But, of course, I always want to be diligent. Say thank you to the tons of people that have showed up over at the Florida Maquis Patreon channel, where it's only one U.S. dollar per month, even less if you sign up for an entire year, fully refundable, first 90 days, no risk to you whatsoever, partner with Vimeo, take the gloves off, talk about things and show things that wouldn't be allowed anywhere else. I do appreciate everyone who shows up here as well, whether you agree or disagree with the videos, if you can maintain a sense of decorum, I very much appreciate all the input. You know, even when I was learning psychological operations, the main topic over at the Florida Maquis Patreon channel, when I was young, when I was first learning this, I thought it was the most boring thing in the world. It was just psychology on steroids, basically. And to most young soldiers, it was nap-worthy. But I am so glad that I paid attention when I did, and I learned it when I did. Because now, in the world we live in, unlike way back in the 90s, it is used on a daily basis to influence people. Now, real quick, I haven't uh, done this in quite some time, but it would have been very difficult for you to get out of the 1980s and 90s without having seen the movie or at least seen some reference to the movie Full Metal Jacket. There's a line in the movie, uh, Private Joker is silly and he's ignorant, but he's got guts and guts is enough. Now, for those of you who haven't seen the movie, I'm not going to ruin it for you, but it is absolutely one of the most accurate movies about the military, unlike Top Gun, that you'll ever see. There's a lot of movies out there like uh, Saving Private Ryan and all this, this hero stuff. This gets you down to the, the nitty gritty of what life in the military can be like. And this idea of guts being enough, I'd like to send a huge shout out and thank you to Lisa Haven, Justice Knight. Why? Well, unlike many, many other channels, they have had the guts to actually mention the Florida Maki on their channel. To my knowledge, it's the only channel larger than mine that has actually had the guts to come out and say, hey, check out the Florida Maki. This is really good information. I really want to just take the time to say thank you. Absolutely an amazing thing. I'm, I'm humbled. Um, Lisa Haven's been around forever. Half a million subs at her channel. Um, today they're uh, doing fundraising for the VA for the veterans. Um, so check out that video for sure. But they have all sorts of irons in the fire. Uh, Lisa Haven, Restricted Republic, Justice Knight, all the same thing. Generally speaking, they have different websites. This is the Restricted Republic website. Their actual website off, off of YouTube. This is the Lisa Haven channel on YouTube. Um, Lisa Haven and Justice Knight together have a really great channel called We're Forked Up, where they go out and they review restaurants. I believe he at one time was a chef. So they go out and they kind of just cut loose and have a good time. We're Forked Up has its own website, um, and then Restricted Republic, its own Instagram. So they have all sorts of places you can find them, but once again, I just wanted to say thank you. To my knowledge, 
Lisa Haven, Restricted Republic, Justice Knight, they're the only channel in six years of doing this, larger than mine. I've had some smaller channels, like Jennifer Veterans Truth has uh, mentioned my channel multiple times, but no larger channels have ever um, taken the time to reference the Florida Maquis, and it means a lot. It really does. Thank you so much. Check them out. You will not regret it. Tons and tons of great information going back. In the case of Lisa Haven, I think over 10 years, which is a lot for YouTube. Uh, Justice Knight, at least at least six or seven years from what I know. Um, but once again, We're Forked Up is absolutely hilarious. They uh, go out and just act like a normal couple and review stuff, and it's it's really a great break. But the main topic of today's video. This is the picture they didn't show you in the video from yesterday. I had to find this by doing some research. You see, this is way before. Way, way before they were here. Now, Navy guys, help me out here. Help me out here. If my understanding is right, I'm an army guy. I'm going to plead ignorance here. I'm just a ground pounder. If my understanding is right of how this is supposed to work, the Harper's Ferry, off in the distance, is here to starboard of the Momsen. And look up in the plane, look up at night, and you see the planes, and you look on the wings, one has a green light, and one has a red light. And usually it's on an aircraft, and it works the same way with naval vessels, if I'm not mistaken, the light on the starboard side, the starboard wing, flashes green. And the light on the port side or the left side, as you're flying or as you're guiding your vessel, is flashing red. What does this mean? That the ship to starboard has the right-of-way. So at this point in time, the Momsen needed to yield right-of-way to the Harper's Ferry. Because they're approaching at each other at 90 degrees. But what, what actually happens here? It looks like the Momsen swings way out in front, and now they're nose to nose. And in this particular case, I think the rules dictate a different response. Now it's they both swing to port, and... The Momsen more than the ferry does. Um, Harper's Ferry, pardon me. And they avoid the collision. But this can show you how just a little piece of information can change the entire picture. Now, what does this have to do with the issue with the Fitzgerald and who lied? Well, the first thing I noticed way, way, way back in 17 was when Admiral O'Coin came out. And usually in cases like this where there's been some type of an event, especially where there's been loss of life, they have basically a pre-printed, pre-written statement that they would just issue to the media and they would just fill in the basic details. They wouldn't throw anybody out in front of microphones to talk about this unless they were trying to keep people from asking questions. Now, yesterday, I referenced a crayon drawing. This is from the picture you're seeing. I am not joking here. This is from the official report. When they released, and I have the downloaded PDF, you can get it from USNI. It's not hard to find. USS Fitzgerald official report. That's all you got to type, and it's super easy to find on Google. This was the crayon drawing that I referenced. Now, you can see how different this is from the image that we showed yesterday from the NTSB. This blue line right here is the course of the Fitzgerald. This yellow line, gold line, whatever, is the course of the crystal. Now, it shows you here that what they're trying to say is, oh, look how kind of meandering the course of the crystals, but look how nice and straight and pretty and perfect the course of the the. Fitzgerald is. They're trying to make you believe that all these civilian ships are just out wandering around, almost impossible to avoid, and man, our Navy crew did the best they could, but there's just no way when they're just all just swimming around out there that you're going to... You see, this is the ridiculousness of this. 
Now, here's the NTSB finding of this. And this is what really struck me as odd. The Fitzgerald at 124 in the morning doing 19.4 knots and accelerating makes this strange 10 degree turn to starboard. Now, what's crazy about that? Well, guess what? In the report, in the report, let's see if I can bring it up here, which is right here from USNI News, they have a detail of every event that happened that, and they never mention in the official report from the United States Navy that 10 degree turn. 0115, Crystal was closing Fitzgerald's intended track at a high rate of speed. 0117, the Fitzgerald officer of the deck plotted a radar track on a vessel thought to be Crystal and calculated that Crystal would pass 1,500 yards from Fitzgerald on the right starboard side. It is unknown if the OOD was tracking the Crystal or another commercial vessel. 0120, the watchstander responsible for immediate support to the officer of the deck, the junior officer of the deck, reported citing Crystal visually and noted that Crystal's course would cross Fitzgerald's track. The officer of the deck continued to think that Crystal would pass at 1,500 yards from Fitzgerald. 0122, the junior officer of the deck cited Crystal again and made the recommendation to slow. The officer of the deck responded that slowing would complicate the contact picture. 0125, Crystal, and now this is no mention at this 0124 moment of a 10 degree turn. Crystal was approaching Fitzgerald from the right, starboard side, three nautical miles. Fitzgerald watchstanders at this time held two other commercial vessels in addition, addition to Crystal. One was calculated to have a closest approach point at 2,000 yards, and the other was calculated to risk collision. No contact reports were made to the commanding officer, and no additional course and speed determinations were made on these vessels. You see, in the official report, it's completely different than what the NTSB found. And that's actually what this article talks about. This change in course was entered into the ship's log, but investigations were unable to find a reason for the adjustment. I would like to know why it was left out of the official report. If it's in the log, why is it not in the report? The revelation of the course change was one of the few new pieces of information contained in the first independent assessment, which was released today almost three years after the Navy's own probe. And that was three years ago. So this is now fact entered into the record that the Navy forged their own report. The Navy faked and falsified their own report to include not reporting a 10-degree course change. And here's my favorite thought. I'm sure a lot of you are looking at these numbers. What are all these numbers? This is how inaccurate the reporting was. This is where they're saying the crystal was at 0.015 hours, 110. They're saying that it was at the collision point here, 115, but the Fitzgerald didn't arrive till 129. It's just absolutely bizarre how inaccurate their own report was. And when this channel called it out, we were called a conspiracy theorist. We were called all sorts of names, especially by a lot of Navy guys that thought that I was just, you know, trying to, because I'm some, some sort of liberal apologist for Obama, that everybody wanted to blame the Obama Navy, the Obama Navy. Oh, sad sacks, don't know what they're doing. You know, crew had poor training and all this crap when the Navy was literally lying about what happened that night. Even going back to the, uh, the press conference, there was a discrepancy between the Japanese defense forces who responded to the Mayday call from the Fitz about the time of the collision. One said it was at 1.30 in the morning, the other one said it was 2.20. Even the Admiral had it wrong. So they didn't even know at this point, within an hour of when the collision occurred. You see, 
you would have to say either they didn't know or they knew very well and they were lying about it. Now, I personally think it's the second. I know that there are some people in the Navy that are in positions that maybe they shouldn't be in, but this guy was a former fighter pilot, Admiral Coyne. He was known for attention to detail. I don't think he would have come out and, out of ignorance, made a, a hard rock statement, a factual statement, that he couldn't confirm and back up. So clearly, there was an active deception going on at the time, simply based now on what we can see from the NTSB versus what the Navy reported at the time. Seven lives were lost here. Ten with the McCain. Who knows what lies they cooked up then. I would love to, I would love to hear the explanation of why this 10-degree course change was completely left out of all official reports and not referenced until years later when a civilian independent agency looked at the data. When, of course, nobody cared. And here's and even if you were trying to look at what were they trying to do, you can see here that the Fitzgerald is speeding up 19.1, 19.2, 19.4, up to 19.7 knots. If you were going to try to gun it and get out in front of the ACX crystal, why would you turn to starboard? You would, if you were going to speed up, you would think, okay, he made a 10 degree adjustment to port to kind of swing around out in front of him. And the crystal, which we knew the crew was active at the time and were aware of the Fitzgerald's track, when they made this turn to port, if they were attempting to miss, they would have been slowing as well. And you would only have to do it by, a, you know, not even... And here, look, 17.9, 18.3, 18.4, 18... So they were gunning it. So literally, they both turned toward each other and gunned it. Literally put the pedal to the metal and tr literally were trying to hit each other. That's what these numbers tell me. Whoever was, I mean... Somebody's lying somewhere. Somebody's lying about something somewhere. And now we have proof of it in not just random reporters. Not just, uh, you know, this news agency reported this or that other news agency reported that. Official report from the U.S. Navy. Official report from the NTSB. Now tell two entirely different stories. Somebody's lying. Somebody's trying to cover something up. Either this report is meant to, to cover something up or the Navy report was meant to hide something. There's no way you can make any other assessment. Either that or both agencies are just completely incapable of doing a proper investigation. So once again, USNI News. Um... It's not hard to find. Let's see here. USS Fitzgerald, USS John S. McCain collision report from November 1, 2017. Easy to find. You can look at the entire report for yourself. And this article here, let's see if I can find it. That's the screenshot from it. That's the screenshot from the Navy. Here it is. And this article from USNI. From 3 September 2020, NTSB, unexplained course change was a critical error in fatal USS Fitzgerald collision. It's mind-boggling. It truly is. That, that nobody is picking this back up. No major channels are picking this back up and saying, wait a minute. This is a big deal. This is a huge deal. Either the Navy report, the Navy report was either purposely forged or entirely inaccurate, meaning over months and months and months, they didn't even know how to read their own data. Or they tried to, they physically tried to cover something up. And the NTSB just outed that. 
Either way, the story is huge. It's a major story, a major news story that should be actually way more important than the, the spy balloons. Somebody needs to clarify this. And I'll leave it there. I mean, what do you think? Am I, am I overreacting here? Once again, thank you, Lisa Haven, Justice Knight, for the big shout-out on your channel. I very, very much appreciate it. God bless to everyone. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you guys next time.